Let's start with question 1.1. So what we need to do is find the Taylor polynomial of fourth degree for the function e to the minus 2x. Fourth degree means that we need to find the Taylor polynomial which includes the term which has the power x to the 4. So this means that, at least initially, we're going to need to find at least four derivatives. So off we go. We have our function f of x is e to the minus 2x. Our first derivative is going to be minus 2 e to the minus 2x. Second derivative, 4e to the minus 2x. Third derivative, minus 8e to the minus 2x. And finally, our fourth derivative, which I'm going to write without the primes, is going to be 16e to the minus 2x. Now you'll notice that in our formula for the Taylor polynomial, we don't actually use f of x, we use f evaluated at a particular value of x. And in our problem over here, we know that a is going to be equal to 0. So we want to evaluate our function and each of its derivatives at x equals 0. Okay, so we've got f at 0, well, e to the 0 is always 1. Our first derivative evaluated at 0 is going to give us a minus 2. Second derivative evaluated at 0 gives us a 4. Third derivative at 0 is minus 8. And our fourth derivative is 16. So plugging a equals 0 and the values for the function and its derivative that we've worked out into our equation, which we have over here, what we get is that e to the minus 2x is approximately equal to f at 0, which is 1, plus the first derivative at 0, which is minus 2 times x minus 0. I'm being very particular here. You don't have to be quite so careful when you get some practice. Now we're on to the second derivative term, so that's going to be 4 over 2 factorial, don't forget that 2 factorial, x minus 0 all squared, plus r minus 8, it's going to be x minus 0 to the 3, and we've got to remember to divide by a 3 factorial. And finally we have our fourth term, so we've got our 16 divided by 4 factorial, and our x minus a, which in this case is 0 to the 4. So let's just write that out a little bit more clearly. So we've got 1 minus 2x plus 4 over 2 factorial times x squared minus 8 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus 16 over 4 factorial x to the 4. And that is our answer. Well, this is all that you'd have to do for a test or an exam. I think it's worth taking a moment to just remind ourselves of exactly what we're doing when you find a Taylor polynomial to approximate a function. So what I've got over here is the function e to the minus 2x. And on top of that, I'm going to plot our polynomial that we've found. I'm going to plot it term by term so that we can see what happens as we add terms to our Taylor polynomial. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to plot just the first term, y equals 1. So what's really happening over here is that we are trying to find approximations for e to the minus 2x in the range of x close to 0. And with just this one term, what we're doing is we're saying, well, we're going to approximate it everywhere by the value y equals 1. So that's not a very good approximation. Let's see what happens if we add the next term. So we add the term 2x. So now we've got an approximation y is equal to 1 minus 2x, which is a straight line. And you'll see that that's giving us a better approximation 
for values very close to x equals 0. If we add on the next couple of terms, so now we've got our quadratic term, let's see what happens there. Well, we can see we're already improving our range, so we've got a much better range of our approximation. If we carry on adding, so now we're approximating our e to the minus 2x with a cubic. Let's see what that looks like. So now we've extended our range a little bit further. Notice we're getting a bigger x range that gives us a good approximation for e to the minus 2x. And let's add on our final term, our term with power x to the 4. Let's see what that gives us. So you'll notice that even using a Taylor polynomial of degree 4, so that's a Taylor polynomial that has a term x to the 4, gives us a very good approximation for e to the x in the range roughly minus 1 to 1. So that was just a reminder of what it is we're actually doing when we find Taylor polynomials. We're finding polynomials that we can use to approximate values of functions close to a particular x value.